And to our viewers here in the Situation Room, happening now, Ron Paul gets the uh, political star treatment in New Hampshire on this. The primary eve, uh, big crowds and new polls suggest Ron Paul may be emerging as Mitt Romney's toughest competitor. We're just hours away from the voting in New Hampshire. Mitt Romney's five opponents are hammering on his record and trying to chip away this lead. The race for second place in tomorrow's primary is heating up right now. Two polls out today show Romney still is way ahead in the state uh, next door to his home base in Massachusetts. Ron Paul holds the number two spot in both surveys of likely voters. John Huntsman has moved up to third place. Ron Paul may be positioning, positioning himself as the anti-Romney candidate heading into tomorrow's contest and the next critical battle in South Carolina. Our senior, con uh, uh, our, our senior uh, congressional correspondent, Dana Bash, is covering Ron Paul's campaign for us. Dana, what's the very latest? The very latest, uh, Wolf, is that Ron Paul spent a lot of time here in New Hampshire gripping and grinning, uh, doing the kind of retail politics with New Hampshire voters that they like and they even demand. He did it kind of under the radar, but today it was very clear that's over. <laughs> At Mojo's restaurant in Manchester, Ron Paul's offbeat campaign goes mainstream. <laughs> he came to press the flesh but had trouble getting through the press. Well, there's a lot of congestion up here. <laughs> a crush of cameras and reporters out to see the insurgent candidate on the rise. So he scrapped plans to sit for breakfast and left. Uh, what do you drive over? Oh, say can you... Up the road in Hollis, a less chaotic scene, and a chance for voters to hear firsthand what makes him so different from every other candidate, wanting to cut all foreign aid. Every penny you spend overseas doing almost anything overseas is a drain from the economy. Appealing to New Hampshire's live free or die sensibilities. We know what we're, our government's supposed to do. It's, it's supposed to protect our liberties. Meanwhile, Paul's campaign is gaming out how to stay in the race for the long haul. He told CNN that may mean putting resources into caucus states like Nevada, Maine, and Louisiana, and not focusing on Florida, which comes first. We don't have a big campaign plan there, uh, but they'll know we're there, and uh, we have the caucus states that we'll be paying more attention to. Does that say anything about your efforts to actually secure the nomination? I mean, it's sort of hard to do it without really competing in a state like Florida. No, well, I think it tells you that we are realistic, and uh, that's the way we approached Iowa. We thought we did pretty well there, and uh, right now, polls are looking pretty good up here. So I think we're being realistic. We shouldn't be acting like the government and plan to spend money we don't have. Translation, he may be able to raise more cash and compete in Florida if he does really well here in New Hampshire. This independent voter came undecided. Now? I am going to vote for Ron. Did he just convince you? Yes, he did. I was sitting on the fence last night. Um, I had been considering John Huntsman as well. But Paul's early exit back at Mojo's turned off Karen Heller, who even tried to follow him outside. And it's like, wait a second, you were supposed to come here. We came here early, we held a table, you were supposed to come and talk to us, and now you're taking off. We asked Paul about Heller's beef. He blamed the media madness. Because, because you, the media, did that to her. She should have been furious with you. And as you see, Dr. Paul was less than thrilled with that question, but the independent voter that we were talking about made clear to us that she has met candidates many times face-to-face, -face, even in the midst of intense media scrums, not unlike what we saw today. But Wolf Paul's campaign issued a statement after that saying uh, that he has done lots of face-to-face, one-on-one time with voters here, but that today's event was, uh, was deemed unsafe for the candidate because the press created a, quote, mob-like atmosphere for him and his wife. Wolf. We expected, Dana, correct me if I'm wrong, you're there in New Hampshire, maybe 200,000, 250,000 people to vote in the Republican primary tonight, tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow during the day, but get the results tomorrow night. Maybe 40% of them will be independents, and that's a, that's a good uh, solid base for Ron Paul. It is a good solid base for him. And just anecdotally, Wolf, a number of the voters I talked to who were at the events for him throughout the day today did say that they were independents. Now, as you know very well, people who call themselves independents here in New Hampshire aren't necessarily 
really independents, they tend to really vote with one, uh, one party or the other. But I have to tell you, I had to talk to several, including some in that piece who told me that they voted for Democrats in the past. One even voted last time for Barack Obama, which is why uh, she said that she wanted to listen to Ron Paul because she wasn't sure she wanted to make that kind of switch, but she said she might. Yeah, I think a lot of Democrats who will vote in the Republican primary uh, in, uh, in New Hampshire tomorrow, a lot of those independents, they like Ron Paul's anti-war po policy that's probably popular amongst a lot of them. Yep. Uh, Dana. I'm sure you talk to Republicans who are worried as well, just like I am, uh, that Ron Paul will continue on long into the, uh, into the spring and summer, even further, even if he runs as a Republican or as an independent, he could really hurt whomever the Republican nominee is because still nobody thinks, even if he does well here in New Hampshire, that he will ultimately be the nominee. I'm sure you talk to Republicans who are worried as well, just like I am. At the last stop, where you just were, it was madness. But there was a woman there who was a New Hampshire voter. She voted for Barack Obama in the last primary. She said she told me that if she would have been able to just shake your hand and look you in the eye, you would have gotten her vote, but now she's turned off because you left. Does that, does that say anything about... Your ability to say something about the media. This is junk. This is a junky question. We're stopping. This, this, no, 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 no. this is junk. We're moving international. The These are junky questions. Yes. Because, because you, the question. media, did that to her. She should have been furious with you. Okay. You want to ask good questions? Ask I want to ask about a voter. That, that was absolutely wrong. You saw it because there were 100 reporters just like you and your crew fair, that did that. Of course, that woman was wrong. To be fair, she said that she's taking that off. Kurt Jenkins with credit. You're, you're part of the same group. We're done. Sorry, sir. Thank you. Because you, as media, did that to her. She should have been furious with you. I'm sure you talk to Republicans who are worried as well, just like I am, uh, that Ron Paul will continue on, who are worried as well, just like I am, who are worried as well, just like I am, just like I am. 